I'm curious if that's comparable to this sort of world, this culture of toxic fandom, where like if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, it does, like you have great intentions, but there are always going to be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, this is Birch. I started a video and it's like I just wanted to tell a little quick story to kind of lead in something else and then like four minutes into it I got bored of what I was saying and it just just stopped. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, it's not meant to be that way. Um, but what I was relating, and I could do it in 30 seconds this time, is that uh, I was talking to another YouTuber and the guy was giving me a lot of trouble for doing the interview with Phil Kennedy Johnson under the premise that um, hey, now people are going to go out and buy that comic more, meaning Action Comics 1051. And that, that hurts us because DC needs to be taught a lesson. And the only way they're going to be taught a lesson is if their sales go down. So if I'm giving any kind of positive attention at all to DC, it's never going to improve. That was the premise. And I, I don't need to go into the whole cycle lab, but that's dumb. It's, it's dumb. And it, it, it's also very thoroughly into, uh, Sniffing your own farts territory if you think that, you know, a small YouTube channel or even a YouTube channel by the people who have like 10 times the subscribers that I have. Um, if you think that they're actually changing policy and and somehow there's, you know, by by not doing something, it's going to steer attention away from something. Else. That's that, that's that's ridiculous. Um, but uh, I, I cut it off because I, I am tired of the culture war and I know lots of people are not. Uh, a lot of the questions that come in are about the culture war and all about this dynamic, but it's not terribly interesting because no matter how many different times you describe it, no matter how many different angles you come at it, you come down to kind of two things, just, you know, people who are either insecure or stupid. Um, yeah, there's other things in there as well, but I mean, you know, there, it can be as simple and it should be as simple. When I say insecure, stupid, I mean the people who are getting really worked up about it because at the, at the end of the day, you are in control of what you let into your life. Now, I'm not talking about government policies and all that kind of stuff, but I mean, just comics and media, you, you have control over that switch. So just, you know, plug that hole, stop it, stop consuming it, and you'll make yourself happy. You'll make yourself, now it doesn't, I know there's no guarantee that doing that means companies are going to change what they do. Uh, somebody uh, recently said, you know, hey, Perch, you're always saying that, you know, we shouldn't buy it, but how's that supposed to change the company? Well, it may not. If enough people think like you, it will. But, and I mean this in the most selfish way possible, screw everybody else. Screw everybody else. It's about you. Be selfish. Make yourself happy. If you are happy, that's goal number one. Good news. Then from there, you know, see where it goes. You know, it, it, from there, if you make yourself happy, you will discover that, you know, you can you can roll other things to yourself. You can you can actually find some some stuff that maybe you like. Uh, but I'm, but, <laughs> and, and please don't, don't hold me as, cause I'm still answering your questions and I'm still going to try to do the best I can, but I want to, I want a, a real, real rapid reduction of the culture war stuff. Cause there's just not anything new. If you have a new angle or a new way to kind of comment on it, by all means, bring it to me. But otherwise a lot of this stuff, it's just the same ground over and over. Don't buy it. Number one, make yourself happy. Number two, you know, fools are going to do what fools do. And uh, I wish I wish there was a cure for stupidity around the world. I certainly do, but there you go. There's not. Eh. So unfortunately, COVID didn't take care of. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, this is a male. This is kind of one last uh, gasp at a piece. So this and this is an interesting angle. So Henry Cavell and the culture war. Okay. So the male goes, "Hey Birch, it seems the culture war narrative pushers hit a new low in the wake of the news surrounding." Henry Cavell's firing for the role of Superman. Some people on Twitter took that and turned it into a culture war talking point, saying nonsense like how this was woke Hollywood's attack on masculinity. Seems these people took Cavell's feelings on his experience during production of The Witcher and applied it to what happened to him at Warner Brothers, even though there's no connection between the two. What's your thoughts on this? 
Uh, anyway, Merry Christmas. Hey, yeah, Merry Christmas to you. Um, I, I find it a little funny. I've seen this this bit go on. It's like, Will Collywood wants to get rid of a true man's man. And I guess, I'm. I, when did Henry Cavell get established as a man's man? Is it because he got some hair on his chest? He walks around? I mean, I... I I, I, what I remember is that a lot of people were super thirsty for Cavell. And um, I remember making fun of those people like, uh, you know, oh, look, he's got his shirt off and, and kind of these slobbering kind of BuzzFeed like posts of, you know, Henry Cavell's nipples are out and I'm here for it. And it's like, ugh, I'm sorry, <laughs> gross, <laughs> not not here for it. Um, so I, I always thought that was a little ridiculous. And then right now, um, suddenly it's like, see, he was the perfect definition of masculinity. I mean, I, I guess what I remember is, uh, very clearly it was, was he was in mission impossible, right? That was what, and he was fighting Tom Cruise or, or maybe he's fighting somebody. I'd be Tom Cruise and he was fighting. somebody. I don't remember. All I know is, and I'm doing a terrible job of uh, describing this, but go watch this film and Cavell cocks his arms like they're guns. Like he actually like shakes out his arms like he's reloading his his biceps. It's hilarious. It, I mean, it's it's a it's a manly move. I, I make no no mistake about it. Your guns are actual guns. It's a uh, it's uh, it's pretty hilarious. I don't know if you know if you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll I'll be smart enough and put that little video clip in the beginning of this. But he cocks his arms like guns. It's 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 comical. Um, but, you know, I, I and that, by the way, none of this is a knock against Cavell. I thought Cavell was a great Superman. Um, I think he he kind of had the, the look of Superman. He I, I have no I, I no 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 flaw. I like The Witcher. OK, I, I mean, it is for, for what it is on Netflix. It's it's not I mean, this isn't art and it's not the most amazing thing in the world. And there are these stories about some real toxic bullshit that went on on the on the filming. For sure, you can go look that stuff up. Sounds like he did have an absolutely miserable ass time there. And there were a bunch of people that just were absolutely miserable harpies to work with. No doubt about it. Um, but um, as far as the show, I mean, it's entertaining enough. I mean, what am I going to watch that? Like <laughs> Henry and Megan documentary? You got to be fucking kidding me. No, I'll watch The Witcher. Thank you. No, I'll, I'll watch The Witcher. Versus like... Uh, Nailed it, season 542. It's like, look, we brought some morons in here who don't know how to bake, and they fucked up baking. I couldn't imagine that. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Like, the joke was funny once. And then, you know, you're, like, by by episode four, you're like, okay, this show is made for children and idiots. Um, sorry, I'm just offending everybody today. Uh, but there you go. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I find it funny. That suddenly, you know, it's it's defending Cavell's masculinity is is part of the goal. I just it, it it was an interesting twist I didn't see coming in 2022 from one side of the culture war. Uh, but but look, I mean, overall, uh, you know, we'll see. Will Gunn's plan play out to have a younger Superman? I mean, okay, I you know, be my guest. I think people Cavell is a star. He is somebody people actually show up to the movies to watch. And uh, right now, Hollywood uh, is short on those. So I think if I was, you know, a movie production studio, I wouldn't be, you know, showing Cavell the door just yet because, you know, I, I need some people who are going to bring in box office. And, you know, I, I don't think I have many of those. And so I would, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be I'd be trying to find a, a, a role for him if he wanted to play Superman and he can he can bring in money. I mean, unless he's asking for too much, which is certainly that's certainly possible that there's a money issue involved here, but, but overall, um, I, I'd be trying to make that one work because I think, I, I think, <laughs> I think it, I think they need him a lot more than he needs them. I think that Cavell is a decent star and, and I think it, uh, well, whatever. So there you have it. Um, Henry Cavell, Superman, part of the culture war. I mean, I guess, sure. Why not? Um, at the end of the day, I think Cavell's going to land somewhere. I mean, quite frankly, what all this sets up as, and, you know, mark my words, I would bet you that unless this is a big scam, meaning, you know, Gunn actually does have a plan for Cavell. Remember, he's done this before where he said, oh, yeah, this guy's out. And then it turned out he wasn't out. And it was all they've, they've done that. Uh, they did that with um, Chris Pratt returning for Guardians 2. There's a brief moment where they tried to trick everybody that he was going to be out. So it is definitely possible that's going on here. Just just keep that in mind.
it's also possible if they figure out a way to sign him for, you know, old man, Superman or whatever the hell they're doing, kingdom come or something like that. They can certainly do that. Um, but assuming it's all on the level and he's truly out and he's going to do Warhammer and stuff now, you know what I bet? I bet he's going to pop up in the MCU because if there's one thing Disney likes and, you know, in this kind of very friendly, but slightly cold war that they have going on, um, I, I'll bet you that uh, we're going to see an MCU casting announcement of Cavell as, I, I don't know, who's who's left. I mean, one of the big kind of burly heroes. He'll, he'll show up and he'll be there. Now, it being, you know, Marvel MCU being the MCU, it's also likely that, uh, you know, they'll sign him up and they're like, oh, we have this big casting announcement. And then it's like, you're, you're going to be playing, I don't know, uh, something terrible, <laughs> like just... <laughs> <laughs> just some some bit bill or some villain, uh, like they did with uh, you know with Cora, poor Christian Bale and and Batman. I mean, I I don't know. I'll bet there's uh, uh, sorry he played um, Gore the God Hunter in a in a role that was not great for him and just kind of was in the background. I'll bet Cavell shows up in the MCU and that's that's the next step. But Culture War, I don't know. It it does it, it. I don't know. May, maybe maybe some of you are still into it. It feels like it's getting dumber. It's accelerating into dumb. At this point, people just want to, they want to hear, they want to, they want to hear their own thoughts echoed back at them. A, a lot of the, the bigger channels right now just stayed stupid as shit. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that, that's what's in my head. And that, that's all for you. They just want a little bit of an echo chamber and hell after a couple of years of COVID and all the rest of this bullshit, who can blame them? We all just want to just, just take it easy and, you know, be done. Thanks for listening.